Greetings, my friends. I hope you're all doing well. I am doing great this morning, I have to say. This is my favorite time. This is the golden hour. Just before dawn, ACDC cranking, hitting the weights, doing the push-ups, doing the squats, getting ready, getting ready to hit the heavy bag. This is the golden hour. Hope you're all having a good time as well. Hope this is a good time for you. But what I want to talk about somewhat ironically is anger. I'm not feeling angry right now, but I got anger on my mind. I'm probably going to get angry later. I'm probably going to decide to get angry later. Sounds silly, but I mean it. What am I talking about? Before I go on, I want to say something, all right? On this channel, I talk a lot about spiritual esoteric topics. I talk about them generally in a third person. I very rarely talk about my own spiritual practices, my own spiritual pursuits. This is by design. Number one, there is nothing that I care, nothing that I find more boring to talk about than myself. But number two, I just don't think that, I don't think it's wise to go to tangle up my own spiritual pursuits with my, this channel, because this channel is part of my ego, right? And that's fine. Are you, it's, it's, uh, I'm not one of these people, like my spiritual quest is not to negate my ego and to become some kind of, I don't even know what that, what that goal is, to become some kind of empty shell zombie. Why, like, I, I, that's not me, man. I want to master my ego. Right? I want to amplify the best aspects of my ego. I want to make my ego more flexible so that I can adapt. Right? I don't want to be rigid. But no, I'm not trying to negate my ego or to, to completely dispel who I am. I find that ridiculous. But anyway, and so I don't like to tang I don't like to talk too much about my own spiritual pursuits. But what I can say, the, the reason I'm saying this for a reason, because what I'm about to say can be taken as flippant and maybe kind of trivial. I never talk about spiritual concepts trivially or flippantly. I am very sincere in my own practices. Uh, really, the core of my quest is just to get this damn log out of my eye before I die. There's a lot of different things I do to try to achieve this goal. And I won't go into those. Those are my own private practices. But really, that's what it comes down to. I'm trying to get this damn log out of my eye, man. I'm trying to be the best person that I can be. Trying to earn a seat in the White Lodge before I die, which I know is a doomed quest, man. I can never make it. That's my goal, right? Sometimes just reaching for something is the, that's what you have to go for. Even when you know you can't quite do it, just reaching for something meaningful and beautiful and, uh, and profound. Sometimes just the reaching for it is the best thing that we can do. But anyway, anyway, my point is, what I'm about to say is not being said flippantly or trivially. I mean this, all right? And I think it's important. I think it's very important. Because I think people have been hoodwinked. I think people have been badly hoodwinked and turned into passive, weak creatures who are just blowing about in the wind, who will allow any authoritarian body to tell them what to do and will just shrug their shoulders and say, well, you know, I got, I got to be meek, which is particularly ironic today because people don't even, most people don't even have a spiritual inclination. Like the one thing they've held on to is this distorted idea that to, to be spiritual is to be weak and passive and to just allow yourself to be blown about by the wind. It's nonsense, man. Look throughout history. Look through other cultures and other times. Warriors were among the most spiritual people in a society. To be a warrior was considered to be a, a spiritual act. You're putting your own body, your own life on the line to protect your people, your city, your family. That's a deeply spiritual thing. And it takes a deeply spiritual person to be willing to do that. Now, I do I study, I know military history. That's not all warriors, not even, probably not even most warriors. I'm aware of that. Most, most warriors have been just mercenaries, just people that are out there doing it for the money. I get that. But not all of them. Some of the greatest warriors have come from these societies where they were. It was a spiritual quest to put your life on your line, or put your life on the line for your city, for your people. It's a noble thing, all right. But it's also this concept of anger, this idea that anger is always bad. It's nonsense, man. It's nonsense. Uncontrolled anger is always bad. I agree with that. The purpose is not to allow our emotions to control us. It's to control our emotions, but not to get rid of our emotions. Our emotions exist for a reason. God gave us these emotions. These emotions are part of the fabric of reality, just like anything else. The key is to learn how to master them and how to use them, but not to do away with them. 
We need anger. Anger's good. Ang- anger's the thing when, you're, when you've been laying around, you've been lazy for a few days. You're not doing anything. You're not contributing to yourself, your own soul, but also to your family, to the to community, to the country, to humanity. When you're laying around doing nothing, it's often anger that you can use, man. It's like, it's like the fuel. It's the fuel that turns the engine. It's the thing that gets you going. You just got to learn how to harness it. But we need anger is good. I love anger, man. I love anger. It drives me. It drives me. I think of the, the people that have harmed me in my life. And I love, I love it, man. I light a brew up in my heart and it drives me. It drives me to work that extra hour, right? It drives me to do that little extra bit of meditation. Why? Why Why would that drive you to meditate? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I consider, when I think of my quest for enlightenment, and man, does that sound pompous to say. <laughs> but that is my quest. But part of that is, I'm not just trying to become quote unquote enlightened for myself i'm trying to do it for everyone around me man i'm doing it out of love i love the people around me man i love the people around me with a fierce intensity man and i want to be the best person that i can be for them and when i'm having my down days when i'm feeling lazy when i'm feeling weak i think of them and i think of the service that i have to do for them and i think of what i owe them and i think of what i owe to to the to god and to the the beautiful things in my life. I owe them a great debt. It's not my right to sit around and be lazy and useless and weak. It's not fair and it's selfish. And there's a lot of times when I'm sitting there and thinking, you know what, dude, I do not feel like doing this prayer. I don't feel like praying. I think of all of the damage that is being done to good people on this earth in it pisses me off in that anger i use that that's my fuel man and sometimes i use it for simpler things right like working out wake up think man dude i don't want to work out which is funny because working out in the morning like i just said earlier is my favorite time of the day and yet still yeah there's mornings where i wake up and i'm like dude i don't feel like doing this especially now as i'm getting a little older you wake up and your body's a little stiff a little sore it's like man i don't want to get out of bed and (laughs) i don't want to get up and go hit those weights but you know what? I think about I think about all the people who said I wouldn't be shit in my life. And that gets me out of bed. And that gets me hitting the weights. And this is life. The, the quest to be your best, whether it's meditation, prayer, or exercise, or learning something, a useful skill in this world. To me, these are all spirits. All, they're all on the spiritual spectrum. Some things are higher on the spiritual spectrum, but they're all on there. Anytime we're trying to improve ourselves in a, in a meaningful and selfless way, it's part of the spiritual quest. And anger drives me to that. Anger gets me out of bed to hit the weights, man. And then anger gets me to say, you know what? No, I don't feel like laying there and, you know, I don't know, listening to the radio or something. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to pray and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to hone my mind. I'm going to hone my spiritual being. It's anger that gets me there, man. It's anger that makes me want to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to stand for these people who are bullying these other people. No, it's not, it's not my, it's not spiritual, man. It's not spiritual, dude. To me, that is so many of these spiritual people. It's just moral narcissism, man. That's all it is. You know, when I hear these people say, well, yeah, they're evil, but I, I would not want to tarnish my soul by punishing them. Do you realize what an idiotic, selfish thing that is to say? Like, yeah, that's great for you, but now you're allowing these people to continue going around and harming everyone else. Now, of course, all these things need to be done with moderation. You can't go too far with it. You can't become obsessed with the battle, right? You, know, you stare into the abyss and the abyss will stare back. You have to be able to moderate it. You, it requires wisdom. And it requires sensitivity. Sensitivity to your own your own being, your own soul. It's not, I mean, it's it's a difficult tightrope to walk. But in my opinion, we've got to walk it. Because I don't live in this world alone. And I I refuse to focus everything on my own spiritual narcissism and not think about my friends and my family who I love dearly, my community, my country. I'm not gonna turn my back on it, man. I'm not going to do it. So, harnessing this anger, and yes, we have to walk the tightrope. 
you know, and it can become dangerous. And you see people, this does happen, especially people from the, like the more mainstream religions. There's certain denominations of certain religions that seem to really fill people with this. Um, they can really distort people and, and make people become obsessed with, uh, with fighting quote unquote evil. And in so doing, they become these fanatics who end up destroying everything around them. And they themselves, they become the evil that they're trying to destroy. So we definitely, this is a, a, a difficult tightrope to walk. It's a hard row to hoe. But in my opinion, that doesn't mean that we're... That in, my, in my opinion, that does not make it any less necessary. Anger is a tool. It's a gift from God, just like anything else. So long, you know, we're supposed to master our emotions, not allow our emotions to master us, but not to dispel them. Our anger can be our fuel. And it's important. And it's vital. Look at some of these societies where they, they have dominant religions that preach this kind of uh, passive... Uh, your pacifism, you know, this kind of like, I will never harm anything for to harm anything is, you know, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be too, uh, I'm not trying to be too harsh. It's kind of hard to not go there when I talk about this subject though. But look at these societies. You notice the, the authoritarian regimes that rule over them? Does it seem like maybe that they're, maybe that their spiritual perspectives enabled these totalitarian regimes to rule over them? I think it's possible. It's possible. But anyway, I don't want to get into that because that's getting too close to politics. But just my point is, man, anger's here for a reason. It's a gift from God. It's a part of it's a part of our being. Right? Like if you're somebody who comes from the more hermetic bent, it's not just hermetic, there's others other uh groups, other spiritual perspectives that also see this. But you have Mars. You have the you have the, the Mars energy. You have an entire of of the of the major forces on this earth one of them is the mars energy the warrior energy which is partially anger but again not uncontrolled anger uncontrolled unrestrained anger is never good but controlled anger focused anger harnessed anger yeah man that's a virtue and i think we need more of it and i don't think it should be i don't think it should be talked about as being antithetical to spirituality i think that's crap i think it's nonsense and i just wanted to say that so that's it. I'm getting back to hitting the weights. I hope you guys all have great days. I mean that. Take it take it easy, my friends. Have great days. And find something to be angry about. And channel that anger into something creative, beautiful, meaningful, and powerful for your fellow man, your fellow, your fellow person, your fellow human being, your family, your friends. All right, peace out.